Hello, and thank you for being with me for another one of my talks. The title of this talk is The Golden Rule in Journalism, Which Western Mainstream Media Breaks. Western mainstream media outlets, such as CNN, The New York Times, Sky News, and The Daily Telegraph, portray themselves as independent, free, credible, and reliable. That portrayal is as laughable as is the assertion that two plus two equals five. In short, the portrayal can be swiftly and effectively refuted. And to do so, one need only concentrate on the golden rule in journalism, which Western mainstream media breaks 24 hours a day, seven days a week, month on month, year on year, namely impartiality. There are many cases which one can cite to convincingly and irre irrefutably demonstrate that Western mainstream media is not impartial. From the wars in the former Yugoslavia, to NATO intervention in Libya, to the war in Syria, to so-called climate change, to what is referred to as COVID-19, to BLM, to immigration, to Trump, and so on, and so on. However, I will focus my attention in this talk on how Western mainstream media is covering the war in Ukraine. A truly impartial media would cover the war in Ukraine in the following manner. Firstly, news reports and news articles would never use politically motivated, inflammatory, and psychologically conditioning words and descriptions, such as Putin's war, Putin's army, Russian aggression, baseless Russian claims, Russia targets civilians, and Russian propaganda. Instead, news reports and news outlets would report on developments on the front line and in the rear without the use of prejudicial words and descriptions. So, for example, the Russian army carried out an assault on a strategic hill in Kharkov Oblast, or the Russian air force bombed a bridge in Kherson Oblast, which is vital to the logistics of the Ukrainian army. Secondly, news reports and news articles would apply the word claim to both parties. So, for instance, the Russian military claims that the hotel it bombed was inhabited by Ukrainian army personnel, NATO instructors, and foreign volunteers. While from the Ukrainian perspective, the wording would be, the Ukrainian military claims that the hotel which the Russians bombed was inhabited by civilians. Thirdly, each and every claim by Moscow or Kiev would be thoroughly investigated and scrutinized before it is reported on. And if a claim cannot be substantiated, then either the claim would not be reported on or a caveat would be attached to a news report or a news article along the lines of, for example, the claim by Ukrainian authorities that the Russians are abducting Ukrainian children and taking them to Russia was investigated by our journalists who were neither able to confirm nor deny the veracity of the Ukrainian claim. Another example would be, Moscow's claim concerning the existence of US bio labs in Ukraine were investigated by our journalists who were neither able to confirm nor deny the veracity of the Russian claim. Thirdly, even handedness would be employed when interviewing Russian and Ukrainian officials. While there would be no smirks on the faces of interviewers and no flippant attitudes present. So for instance, 
When interviewing a Russian official, the following could be put to him or her. How do you respond to allegations that the Russian army committed a massacre at Butcher? As opposed to, the whole world knows your army committed, committed a massacre at Butcher. And for a Ukrainian official, the following. How do you respond to allegations that Ukrainian forces using NATO weapons are targeting civilians in the city of Donetsk, as opposed to Russia's propaganda machine says your forces are targeting civilians in Donetsk with NATO weapons. What do you say to that? Fourthly, Russian and Ukrainian officials would be interviewed in equal numbers. Fifthly, news reports and news articles would never contain personal opinions because the job of a journalist is to only report what they see, not to draw their own conclusions. It is down to members of the public to form conclusions and to do so on their own. Sixthly, opinions would only be expressed by experts in the opinion section of newspapers or websites. And there would be equal numbers of pro-Russian, pro-Ukrainian and neutral opinion pieces. Seventhly, sides would never be taken. So for example, by raising money for one side or having one of the side's flags attached to the masthead. And finally, claims which are clearly idiotic for all to see would never be reported on. So, the aforementioned is how a truly impartial media would report on the war in Ukraine, in accordance with the golden rule in journalism. Now, taking each of those points, let us see if Western mainstream media adheres to them. Firstly, from the start of the war in Ukraine, Western mainstream media has used words and descriptions which are clearly biased against Russia. So, for example, Western journalists routinely say and write, Putin's army, baseless Russian claims, and Russian propaganda. Whereas these journalists never say Zelensky's army, baseless Ukrainian claims, and Ukrainian propaganda. Secondly, Western mainstream journalists treat claims by the Ukrainian government as gospel and say, for instance, the following. The Russians have bombed a school full of children. The Russians have bombed a hotel full of civilians and the Russians have bombed a restaurant full of diners. Thirdly, each and every claim by the Russian government is denigrated and dismissed either explicitly or implicitly by Western mainstream journalists, while each and every claim by the Ukrainian government is relayed to members of the public by Western journalists as factual. And it goes without saying that claims by Moscow or Kiev are never investigated by Western mainstream journalists. Instead, these journalists simply say yay to Ukrainian claims and nay to Russian claims. Fourthly, when interviewing Russian officials, Western mainstream journalists are aggressive, condescending, dismissive and baying for Russian blood. Whereas when the same journalists interview Ukrainian officials, their tone of voice and demeanor is conciliatory. They do not interrupt answers and they allow Ukrainians to make claims without scrutinizing what is being said. Fifthly, in news reports and in news articles, Western mainstream journalists always give their own opinion. So, for example, 
the Russian military, which is using terror tactics against Ukrainian civilians, is preparing for a new offensive. Sixthly, from the start of the war to the present day, not one Western mainstream media outlet has run an opinion piece by someone who is sympathetic to Russia's reasons for having begun a military operation in Ukraine. Each and every opinion piece is fervently anti-Russian and passionately pro-Ukrainian. Seventhly, every single Western mainstream media outlet is explicitly supporting the Ukrainian government, while some are raising money for the Ukrainian authorities, and some have attached a Ukrainian flag to their masthead, such as the Daily Express and the New York Post. Finally, some of the most ridiculous of claims by the Ukrainian authorities are reported on by Western mainstream media, including claims that Vladimir Putin bathes in reindeer feces, that Putin and his defense minister, Sergei Shoigu, carry out ritualistic sacrifices of animals, that old age Ukrainian pensioners are shooting down Russian jets with rifles, and that Ukrainian housewives are bringing down Russian drones by standing out on the balconies of their flats and throwing jars of tomatoes at them. Any enlightened, independent thinking and critical thinking man or woman knows that Western mainstream media is not impartial. And they know too that Western mainstream media is neither free nor credible nor reliable. Only the most stupid, ignorant and brainwashed of people would think otherwise of Western mainstream media. Indeed, all a person requires is an ounce of common sense to determine that Western mainstream media is not what it presents itself to be. Sadly and dangerously, however, there are a great many people in the Western world who are so extraordinarily stupid and gullible that it is beyond their ability to question what Western mainstream journalists say. And it would never dawn on these unretrievable men and women to ask themselves why it is that Western mainstream journalists say, for instance, Putin's army, but never say Blair's army or Bush's army or Zelensky's army. But returning to the focus of this talk, there are many ways to demolish and expose as a lie the claim by Western mainstream media that it can be trusted. And it is my submission that, first and foremost, this should be done by exposing how Western mainstream journalists break the, the golden rule in journalism, namely impartiality. Thank you, as always, for taking the time to listen to my thoughts and analysis.